Welcome to a quick little video tutorial for how you can use my Stable Diffusion plugin for Unreal Editor 5. The purpose of this plugin is to allow you to use Stable Diffusion's AI image generation system in order to take input from something like the viewport and use that to kind of hint and inform to the generator how to create your images. So I'm going to show you how to get the plugin up and running. Make sure that the plugin is loaded. So you want to install this in your project folder underneath uh, plugins. Now it is a C++ plugin, so you will need to have Visual Studio installed to compile it. Um, I'll look at seeing if I can ship the binaries. Now that you have the plugin installed, you can go ahead and go edit plugins and make sure that the plugin is actually available. Now that that's done, to open the actual plugin window itself, we wanna go window and stable diffusion tools. And I'm just gonna dock this over here so you can see it. I recommend having it next to your viewport so you can see the image next to the uh, input, which is the viewport over here. And uh, because I've resized the viewport, I just need to adjust the uh, position of the camera a little bit. There we go, get a nice composition, right, okay. When you open this up, you'll probably have uh, a couple of tabs that are already here. Now in this case, if you've never used this tool before, you will need to install the Python dependencies. So Sable Diffusion, uh, at least the interface I'm using, which is the uh, diffusers library in order to get this up and running, requires uh, a bunch of different dependencies installed. So all you need to do is just go ahead and click the update dependencies button and that will go and open up a couple of windows and download all the Python dependencies that you need straight into Unreal Engine. Uh, once you've done that, that should hide that section. Once your dependencies are all installed, then we have the model section. Now we cannot generate an image until we have basically entered this information in here and initialized the model, which is why we don't have any of our other options available yet. Now, the first thing is you'll need to choose a model. Now I've put in a sensible default, this is the sort of base stable diffusion model for getting most results uh, from. I recommend using the FP16 branch for 16-bit floating point. Um, that is a specific branch with specific models in it. And for precision, I also recommend staying at FP16. This model uh, at FP16 will take up, I think roughly around about four gigabytes of VRAM on your graphics card. Uh, you can choose 32 if you wish, but you need something that has quite a lot of VRAM in order to be able to run it properly. Do keep in mind that since we are running this inside Unreal Engine at the same time, that it's already consuming a bunch of our VRAM. So I recommend turning off features in the viewport that you don't need, such as Lumen, which does consume quite a bit of VRAM. Now that we have our revision and precision and model set, you need a token. So if you do not have a token, you can click on this button. This will open up the Hugging Face website where you can create an account if you don't have one already. Clicking on the button will take you straight to the access token page if you are logged in, where you can create a new token and copy it to the clipboard and just paste it inside the tokens field. Once you've done that, hit the initialize model button and it will then download, and if you've already downloaded, load the model into the plugin. You can watch the progress down in the output log, seeing how far your models have actually downloaded. Once the model has finished in loading or installing, you will have access to the generation panel. Now for this, you have an output image width and height. Um, I've just have it set at 512 at the moment because that's the size of images trained in the model. And we already have strength, iterations, seed, and prompt. Now the magic is going to happen here in the prompt section. So in this case, I'm gonna create something that I want to look roughly like the image that I've already assembled. So I'm gonna do something like the Michelin man stranded on a rock in the ocean. And once it's done, I'm gonna leave the rest of the defaults for the moment. I'm gonna click generate image. You can watch the progress of the image both down in the output log, and once we have a few iterations uh, out, we can actually see the image updating live in the viewport as well. Now, depending on how powerful your card is, this could take anywhere from half a minute to a minute. 
If you do start running out of VRAM during this process, which can happen if, for example, you set the output image size too large, then you want to probably either drop down the image size. Uh, you might run into maybe out of video memory errors floating up in the main viewport. Uh, and if that starts to happen, then you need to reduce your video, ram uh, video card usage. For reference sake, I am running this currently on an RTX 3080. The plugin is, and Stable Diffusion is, uh, only NVIDIA and CUDA compatible at the moment. So we do have sort of this weird little astronauty michelin -y man -y sort of thing over here on one side. It's a little bit off the frame, which is a bit annoying. We can fix that in a second. But you can see the rock is in roughly the right location. We have something that, it's not quite the ocean, but it is getting towards sort of maybe at least, maybe a foggy ocean sort of appearance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lower the strength. So the strength property, it correlates to how much influence does the viewport have over the image that is created by Stable Diffusion. Lower numbers will create images that um, represent the viewport more, but will be sort of less different, less crazy, I guess. So what I recommend is if you're trying to find like some interesting iterations, you can go ahead and have like a larger strength. And then as you find something that you think you like, you can start to sort of dial the strength back down to have something that represents the viewport more. Iterations is how many times the algorithm is going to run across the image. Larger iterations will take a longer period of time, but will create sometimes a little bit more coherent images. These two properties are linked. So if you have a low strength, you'll have less iterations, where if you have a high strength, you'll automatically have higher iterations. Let's go ahead and let's see what it looks like with 0.5. Okay, so now we have an output that is a little bit more coherent with the viewport. So we have, say, more clouds up here in the upper half. We have uh, not really any ocean going on yet, but definitely still, you know, more of a bluer sort of lower section. Character here definitely looks a little bit interesting. Uh, what, I can th what I can see happening here is I think it's trying to create a Michelin man sort of here with shorter arms and we've got like one normal size leg and it looks like he's standing. But then it's gotten a bit confused with what's going on down in this space, which is why we've kind of got this extra body sort of forming down here. So if we want something that's a little bit more coherent, let's bump up the iterations. So in this case, I'm going to keep the strength at 0.5 and let's bump up the iterations to 150. I'm going to stop playing around with this prompt now and let's start seeing maybe if we can make something a little bit different. If you want to say move and sort of zoom in and out the image, you can do so in this viewport as well. Um, yeah, try sticking the upper right hand corner. This will be fixed in later revisions, but it seems to be the area which it likes to work with the most. I'm going to maybe drop down the images a little bit and let's maybe do another variation and I'm going to say a man made from clouds stranded on a rock in the ocean and let's see what that gives us. I'm going to bump the strength up a little bit so whoops uh, there we go 0.6 and let's go and generate that and see what we get. If you're new to Stable Diffusion and you want some examples of prompts, then there are lots of resources available on the internet now for how to essentially uh, prompt smith or design uh, the, the art of designing a prompt in order to create exactly the kind of image that you want. Things I have noticed is uh, having the balance between the strength of the input image versus the actual prompt itself. Um, the system will do the best it can to sort of fill in certain areas with what it thinks might be in those particular places. So for example, if you bring in something like a metahuman into the scene, then have prompts that say something like a man or a woman, then it's more likely going to pick the thing that looks like a human, the region of that viewport, and start to fill in its interpretation of a person within that location. In this case, I don't really have a proper person. I really just have an approximation in terms of like the shape and profile of a person. If you want to create reproducible images that will produce the same output every single time, then make sure to put in a number in the seed section. This can be anything you want, but as long as the seed is present, every image you generate will be uh, reproducible. Once you have an image that you like, you probably want to save it. Uh, so down here, once you've generated one image, you should have access to the image outputs panel. So you can save two different types of images. You can save a texture, which will save 
the image as a texture file straight within Unreal that you can use for other purposes. You could use, for example, um, you could generate, I don't know, tiling textures, such as a tiling texture of the ocean. And once we have our texture, we can go ahead and make sure we click Save Texture. Choose a path. In this case, it's going to be a Unreal path. So if we click on the folder picker, you won't be able to see this, but uh, you can choose a location to save your texture. Give it a name and go ahead and click Save. Once you've done that, you should be have access to your texture straight in Unreal, so you don't have to export and re-import it. In this case, you could use this as, uh, you could feed this back into Unreal, such as if I create a material. If you want to save your image as an external image, you can check Save External Image down here. Choose a path for it to be saved to. And once you've done, set the name. And that will save it in an image format of your choosing. Uh, at the moment, I support PNG, JPEG, BMP, and EXR. Okay, now let's go and modify our scene a little bit. Add a tree to the background. I'm going to use mega scans. Yeah, let's go with the palm tree trunk. Okay, we have our, or the base of our tree at least, in the scene. Let's go ahead and see if we can create a prompt that is going to incorporate this. The Michelin man stranded on a island in the ocean. Let's try island. A man leaning against a palm tree. Let's see if that gives it enough to work with. Let's bring the strength down a bit. So it's more informed by the viewport. Pump up the iterations. And let's see what we get. And there we go. Whilst that's a little bit more horrifying, uh, we can definitely see, so the rock is still there. It has added a palm tree, roughly where the palm tree should be. It's decided this is the most logical place for it. And we've got our character of some description here in the middle as well. Lovely. Of course, we can always go ahead and have more influence of our scene. Some interesting things that have happened here, such as we actually have more of a man because I've used the prompt uh, term man in the second part of the prompt. Whereas because we have said island and not rock, we actually have something that looks like a little bit of foliage here, but we do still have presence of the palm tree here. So do be careful when maybe mixing some prompts and with the viewport. That's about it for the initial release of the plugin. I have lots of ideas for things that I want to continue adding to this. It's been quite fun and exciting to play around with the possibility of stable diffusion in Unreal Engine. So some future things that I am considering adding is animation support, such as being able to control either prompts or weights or properties via the sequencer and the movie queue so that we can say create an animated scene and then feed that through stable diffusion to create some really interesting outputs there are a couple of bugs here and there and if you do see any please let me know on my github page that is linked in the description of the video below i welcome any feedback for this plugin and i hope you can use it to create some amazing pieces of content anyway thanks for your time